For this lab, you are going to be working with one other group of two, making a group of four. Each group of four will need one bin. Each bin will contain two stopwatches, a thermometer that measures in degrees Celsius, a stethoscope, and a blood pressure cuff. Prior to the lab, you're going to have to take several sets of data. The first thing you're going to have to take is the person who's doing the exercises blood pressure. To do that, you're going to go ahead and you're going to take the blood pressure cuff and you're going to put it on snugly. It doesn't need to be super tight, but we don't want it to be loose either. We're also going to want to make sure that the arrows, uh, the patch with the arrows, is right over their uh, brachial artery. So that's going to be towards the inside of their arm. So make sure that that arrow is towards the inside of their arm. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the cuff and we're going to pump it up. And it didn't work for me because I had this valve open. So you need to make sure that valve is closed. So go ahead and pump it up again. You can go ahead and pump it up to approximately 160 to 170. Now somebody's going to have to go ahead and take the stethoscope and put it on the inside of that person's arm, right over where the artery would be. You can go ahead and you can begin to very slowly release the air that's in here. About two uh, millimeters of mercury per second, so about two lines per second it should be going down. When you start hearing the individual's heartbeat, that is their systolic uh, number. When you stop hearing their heartbeat, that will be their diastolic number. So I'm going to release it slowly. Okay. And I just stopped hearing it. So my number is approximately 118 over 66. The set of data that we're going to have to take is the individual's basal body temperature. What is your normal body temperature when you're resting? And to do that, we are going to put the thermometer under the armpit. Uh, it needs to be in there for about uh, a minute or so. Uh, you're just going to have to pick up the shirt, put it in the armpit, and then put the armpit down over the thermometer. And you can watch the mercury rise. After it seems to stop rising, then we'll go ahead and record that temperature. Notice this is in degrees Celsius, not degrees Fahrenheit. Please be careful with the thermometers as they are glass and they are breakable. We're also going to be taking some data on how their skin tone changes. Is it uh, starting out as white and then getting more pinkish and reddish as they continue to do more exercise? And then also what's happening with their perspiration level? How much are they sweating as the exercise goes on? We're also going to be looking at respirations per minute. That means how many breaths is an individual taking in a single minute? Now you don't have to go ahead and count it for an entire minute, maybe you just want to do it for 30 seconds, uh, that would be fine. Uh, and then multiply that number by two to get how many breaths they would normally take in an entire minute. Other things that we'll be looking at is their pulse. Uh, you can go ahead and take their pulse by looking for their carotid artery, which is right in here. Just go ahead and take two fingers, uh, preferably your middle finger and your index finger, and put it on the carotid artery and you should be able to feel their pulse. They should not be, able, uh, be talking though because it will be very difficult to find it if they are doing so. This is how the activity is going to work. You're going to go ahead and the person doing the exercise is going to end up doing a total of eight minutes of jumping jacks. We're going to go ahead and start the jumping jacks after you've collected the initial resting data. After you've collected the blood pressure, heart rate, respiration rate, skin tone, and perspiration levels at rest. So once you've collected all that information at rest, you can go ahead and you can start uh, 
the experiment. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to hit start on your timer. And that person is going to do jumping jacks for a total of two minutes. When that two minutes is up, you'll go ahead and you'll stop the timer. Use the second timer then to start. This is going to show the minute rest that you have. You have one minute to collect data. The data that you're going to be collecting, again, thermometer under the armpit, respiration, how many times are they breathing in a minute, skin tone, perspiration level, and heart rate. Maybe the individual that is doing the exercise might want to do their own heart rate. That would be fine. Okay? So you're going to go ahead and you're going to collect that data. You need to do that within a minute, so have a good system down before you begin. A minute is not that long. Once that minute is up and you've got your data collected, you can go ahead and you can start the second stopwatch again. And two more minutes of jumping jacks. We will continue this process until we're to a total of eight minutes of jumping jacks, at which point we'll collect our final set of exercise data. And then the person doing the exercise will have the opportunity to take one minute rest. At the end of that minute rest, we'll go ahead and we'll take data again. We'll look at how has their blood pressure dropped? How has their temperature dropped? How has their heart rate dropped? And so on and so forth. After two minutes of rest, we will do the same thing once more. At the end, we should see some general trends in our data. We'll be graphing that, and we'll be talking about what your body's response to exercise is and why it's doing those things to help it maintain homeostasis. You'll be collecting your data in this table in the file that's on Notability. You'll then take that data, and you'll graph it in the two graphs that are available in the file on Notability. Make sure you come up with a good title, access labels, and units. 